Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. And either way, thank you so, so much for clicking on my video today. So today's video I'm super, super stoked about because I've had this idea on my mind for at least a year now to make my cat a little matching vest to mine. Not like exactly matching, but just like in general, I wanted to make a little punky vest that I could put on my cat like one time for a picture and then the rest of the time it can just live on uh, stuffed animals or in my closet or something. But I finally got around to doing it and I think the final result is so freaking cute and so freaking fun. So to be clear, I completely winged this project. This isn't like a proper tutorial in the sense that it's like, okay, do exactly this and exactly that and this is how to measure. I just filmed kind of the process of me making a goofy little thing that could have turned out a little bit better, but overall I'm quite happy with. I will have the tutorial first and then the little chat about after, so feel free to skip around, there will be timestamps below. But without further ado, let's get into the tutorial of how I made my cat a little matchy punk vest to mine. So I'm starting out with an old pair of jeans that I have mostly used the legs of to make patches, and I'm taking one of lemon sweaters that fits her to get a rough idea of how much fabric I'll need. With some of the jackets I've seen online, people have used the entire pant, but it looked like I only needed one leg, especially because these ones were really big. Cutting off enough fabric that I have to turn into a tube. <laughs> the next step is to just kind of trim the edges roughly, and this was still a little bit too big, but it's fine. I figured there'd be like seam allowance and wanted it to not be too tight because of the lack of stretch. I decided to use the top as like a fold over collar in the first go around, but I ended up changing my mind on that. Regardless, the next step was to remove all the random bits and pieces like the tags and the zippers and buttons and anything that would kind of impede on making the vest as comfortable as possible. This is definitely more of like a sort of fashion project that I'll probably use for like one photo shoot and then just kind of have as memorabilia. If you actually want your cat to wear this kind of thing, I would recommend probably taking like an actual cat vest and just putting patches on that. You want to be safe, especially if you're taking your cat outside on a leash. Regardless, I removed most of the hardware, but in cutting off one of the back pockets, I have created a hole. <laughs> so I have to just sew the pocket shut back together so that um, there's no weird gap in the fabric, so just be cautious of stuff like that, I guess. And to be clear, I am completely winging this project. I wasn't super sure what I was doing and kind of just based it really vaguely off some Google images that I had looked up. Um, but yeah, I figured it's, it's just like a tube with two holes in it, right? Like, that, that's all you're really making. So I'm kind of using a Lemons sweater as a rough guide throughout, uh, but it would probably be even better if you actually like measured your cat itself so you get the precise measurements for them. But hey, we, we live and learn. I'm cutting out some armholes and I'm making them a lot bigger than originally intended just because I want lemon to be as comfortable as possible to make sure that they're even on both sides. I fold the vest in half and trace the hole out with like a fabric pencil so I can cut the exact same shape. I am checking this fit against lemon as I do everything just to make sure that things are gonna look okay. You don't have to try it on your cat every time. You can just kind of like lay it across them flat um, just to make sure. So the vest was a little bit big, so I decided to take it in a bit. Unfortunately, when I took it in on my sewing machine, I ended up taking it in too much, so I had to kind of undo this. So this was just like a little adjustment. As usual, you will not have to do all these stupid little adjustments if you don't wing it, but do we live and learn? Not necessarily on this channel, and that, that's okay, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn. Anyway, the next step in the project is to just hem all the edges. You totally don't have to do this. In fact, it can look a lot more like punk and raw if you leave. The edges just frayed and um, kind of falling apart, but because of how close to the armholes my vest was, I was really worried that it would like rip apart if it wasn't hemmed. Though if you don't want to do this or if you just don't like hemming, then just ignore this step. Totally fine. I was able to hem all of the sides with my sewing machine, but not the sleeve since it was like a little bit more finicky. So yeah, we're just going with a needle and thread um, by hand with some of the sleeve holes and the rest was just machine sewn. Now it's time for the fun part. It's time to make all of the patches. So I had originally planned to do like a screen printing of all of these. I had like gone online and figured out like kind of the closest things to the fonts that I could get and with some of them manipulating the original band logos in order to um, make them in like a good style, but I figured with how small the patches would be It would be more of a pain to cut out all the tiny stencils versus just painting them on So that's what I ended up deciding to do instead So I'm going ahead first with a fabric marker to get a rough idea of what I want to do And the idea was basically to just do a lot of my favorite bands, but to do like cat 
puns on them. So I did anti-rat instead of anti-flag, and mischief mew instead of mischief brew, and uh, sisters of Percy instead of sisters of mercy, stuff like that. You kind of get the idea. In the end, I, I, I love this kind of corny cat pun silly stuff. So yeah, it was a really fun time. And I'm just using more of the same jean fabric um, to make all the patches. You could do this directly onto your vest, but I really like the look of things being stitched on. And I of course have my little helper Tuna, who is so averse to wearing clothes, so she'll probably never have to wear the vest, but Lemon's pretty chill about these things. <laughs> then I'm taking a mixture of white acrylic paint and screen printing ink and a tiny paintbrush and just going ahead and tracing everything on. I think your best bet with this kind of stuff, if you really struggle with copying band logos, keep an image of the logo you're trying to copy on screen to reference back to. And if the logo doesn't originally have one of the letters that you need for the pun, or if you can't find the exact same like font generator, you can just make it up. Just kind of like try your best. If the letter doesn't exist in that font, as far as you can see on the logo, then no one knows what it looks like, so your version is as good as any. My other tip is to not think of the letters as like the letters themselves, but more as shapes. Um, using a really small paintbrush, taking your time, and doing more thin layers I also find is really helpful. You can always go over stuff multiple times if you need to, and just keep looking at your reference and going back and forth. And remember that it doesn't have to look perfect, it's handmade, and part of the charm of it is when it's a little bit imperfect and you can tell that it was handmade, so don't take your mistakes too seriously. But if you mess up real bad, you can always use black acrylic paint um, to kind Cover up the white or use a q-tip to take it off if it's still really fresh um, but be very careful because you can just smudge it around and make like a bigger mess so yeah generally i would just recommend to wait till it's dry and then go with black paint over it if you make a big mistake or just embrace it because that's part of the process um, i'm going ahead and doing a first layer of everything and then letting it dry before doing a second and then eventually a third layer. I just wanted things to be really nice and saturated in color and I wanted the text to be really sharp and clean and I found that like being able to go with my really tiny paintbrush and the really small strokes and multiple layers helped do that. And you totally don't have to do like band names or anything. I've seen people that just uh, print out their patches and it looks great, or just do regular patches that they bought or got from like local artists or Etsy sellers or whatever. Um, I've seen people that instead of band patches, they'll do like cat related stuff or whatever your animal is. Like maybe you're making a little jacket for a, a gerbil or a dog or something like that and you want to put bones or a, I don't know what gerbils like, uh, carrots or something on it. That would be cool. You know, whatever you're, you're making your thing for, if you're making it for stuffed animals, that's honestly what I think this will mostly live on is the stuffed animals, uh, because my cats are not tolerant enough to, uh, to bear this other than having it with like some treats and, and they're, they're really good sports about it. I mean, lemon is tuna would never, but yeah, we're just going ahead and painting everything in. I found that mixing the screen printing ink with some regular white acrylic paint helped a lot to water it down because the screen printing I used was super gloopy and kind of a little bit difficult to manipulate. It's kind of hard to get that right balance between super runny paint that you have to layer a million times but goes on really smooth and super gloopy paint that is like lovely and saturated but can just muck around and look like a bit of a mess on. So if you have to mix things up and add water or add extra paint or play with different uh, materials, I, I think that's totally fine. But if you're really worried about like needing to wash it a lot, I think a screen printing ink or a fabric paint would probably be your best bet. Then I'm going ahead and just doing the second layer of white paint until I'm happy with everything. And once all my patches are complete, it's time for the very difficult choice of where everything will go. I always just play around with this a lot until I figure out which w configuration I like best. Um, I also find it helpful to take pictures on my phone um, of different configurations so I can compare back and forth, but once I'm happy with one I can go ahead and pin everything in place. I figured that I could sew everything on by machine and it would be really, really quick and easy, uh, but I just love the look of hand stitches so, so much. So I decided to go back to my roots <laughs> a little bit um, when I first started doing like really punky crust pants and stuff like that and go in there with my floss and my needle and just hand stitch those little patches on. Dental floss can be a really great alternative to sewing thread. It tends to be really strong, cheap, 
easy to find because sometimes I don't know if you've ever gotten like a cheap dental floss that you're like wow this actually really hurts and I, and I hate this I, I've been able to like repurpose that kind of thing as uh, sewing thread so that's always a good time but I'm just going ahead and stitching everything in hand sewing is so relaxing to me and though I usually prefer to machine sew just because it's so much more efficient and looks more professional I think there's just like something super super charming about everything being hand stitched on I did uh, these straight stitches for most of the patches but I also wanted to play around with some variation so on some of the patches you'll see that I eventually did some x stitches like crisscross kind of designs or horizontal lines instead of these kind of stripes that are more vertical so yeah just kind of depends on what look you're going for and sometimes I think that mixing things up and having a couple of different types of stitches can look really good and if you don't use dental floss um, embroidery floss regular uh, sewing needles whatever you got on hand is is totally fine once all my patches were stitched on I was pretty happy with it but I decided that the collar was a little bit stiff and to make it extra comfy I wanted to replace it with something different so I had this scarf that I got at the thrift store and had used to make some leopard print patches and stuff before so I'm going ahead and cutting off a little portion of it that is the same length as the collar and originally I was just going to put it over top but it was way too bulky and still rigid so instead I decided to just cut off the original jean waistband and replace it completely with the felt leopard print collar this is totally unnecessary um, totally a stylistic choice if you wanted to put like ribbon or decorative elements or whatever over the original one that's totally fine especially if you're not finding yours to be super thick or uncomfortable or if it's you know just for a picture or a stuffed animal or something you totally don't have to replace the collar but I just thought it added both both a nice textural and color element so I'm going ahead and just stitching that on with my sewing machine and this jacket's looking pretty good you could totally be finished here but I found these silver buttons in my craft bag from the thrift store and I just figured they would make the perfect little you know kind of denim jacket buttons <laughs> so yeah I'm just going ahead and stitching on four or five little silver buttons I'm not bothering with buttonholes or anything because they're just more for the decorative element but if you wanted to do that you totally could I wanted a little bit more metal but um, I didn't want to use any safety pins or spiky spikes for fear of potentially injuring my cat um, that's the last thing I want to do obviously um, so I'm taking these iron-on studs that are very flat and not sharp in any point um, and going ahead and lining them up on spots that I would like to put them. I would found these at the thrift store and I think you're supposed to use them with a special applicator which I don't know what it is or where to get it so I'm just going ahead with an iron and it works out fine. I use some parchment paper at some points to try to keep things more protected to prevent the glue from seeping around but it doesn't seem to be the biggest problem and while I'm at it I'm also ironing down the collar and adding a couple of more little studs I didn't have a specific plan on where they had to be or what they necessarily had to look like I just kind of put them as gap fillers and last but not least I have this little personalized dog tag I got this years and years ago it says girl power and I had it for myself um, as like a little necklace accessory that I would wear in my like riot girl phase and I haven't worn it in forever and I just thought it would be the perfect little touch for this jacket so I'm going ahead and adding a keychain ring that I took off an old broken keychain to the top of the collar and just using a needle and thread to stitch it on I would recommend if you're planning to actually attach a leash or anything to the key ring or d-ring uh, that you use something much stronger than sewing thread because you want to be extra secure uh, but since this is a fashion collar and lemon and tuna never go outside I think it's totally okay and then I'm attaching on my little girl power charm and that's the completed vest I am super super happy with the photos and now it's time to model the results all right so that was the tutorial portion so you've seen kind of the basic thing but yeah I'm super delighted with how it turned out the color I added a couple of stitches to keep it kind of plastered down and I truly think that these little personalized tags add such a special touch and the patches are just my absolute favorite so let's give them all their moment anti-rat for anti-flag the cats is supposed to be in like one of the cure fonts. There's like a bunch of different the cure fonts, but this one seemed like one of the easier ones to replicate, so that's why I chose this one. 
Uh, Mischief Brew is one of my favorite bands. They're absolutely fantastic and I love folk punk and Mischief Mew as a pun was just right there so I couldn't resist. London After Midnight, one of my absolute favorite bands. Uh, Cage likes them a lot as well. Their logo looks really really nice as a patch. I was happy that I was able to make it small enough. And Typo Negative, this was one of the bands that was one of my like very early introductions into goth music when I was like in early high school. I remember listening to a lot of Type O Negative, so I thought it would be fun to do like Treat O Negative. <laughs> Just thinking of like a vampire kitty or something um, with that as a pun. And Nine Inch Whiskers, I know I was thinking of like Nine Inch Claws, even though I know the nails are more about like hardware nails, but Nine Inch Whiskers just sounded like a fun pun. And I decided to do the H backwards, so it would be like backwards, like the ends in the nine. And then P Paralyzed Age is one of my favorite like kind of spooky vampire goth bands. Any any band where it sounds like the lead singer could be a vampire and they're just like taking you away into their crypt and like, I don't know, getting to have this incredible fun and spooky fantasy just make me so so happy. So I wanted to do a little cat version of Paralyzed Age, as in like paw. So I'm really happy with how that one turned out. And to make it kind of stick out extra, I did X's around as the stitches as opposed to just like the straight lines. And then Susie and the Tuxies instead of Susie and the Banshees because both of my cats are tuxedo cats so Susie and the Tuxies felt very appropriate. And then the Sisters of Percy for the Sisters of Mercy. So yeah, I think it turned out super super cute. Let me show you how it looks on some stuffed animals really quick. So it can work out okay on ones that are cat shaped in the sense that like they have the same pose that lemon would normally have. I just kind of have to scrunch it around to make it fit properly. But this is one of my childhood stuffed animals and it can fit <laughs> pretty well on them. You could always put um, like a safety pin or something here if you're putting it on a stuffed animal. Don't use a safety pin if you're putting it on a live animal, but on a stuffed animal I think that's totally okay. So it looks good. I also found it fits on one of my seals from when I was younger because it has also kind of a cat shape, though the jacket does kind of fall off of him a little bit. It can work on like my seal stuffed animal. I also tried it with like some standing stuffed animals, so it's a little goofy. But I think it's cute. Um, so yeah, even if you don't have a pet or if you're like my pet would absolutely not even tolerate this, not even for a second, not even for a photo, then I think if you still want to make this project and you have a stuffed animal, that can still be a fun use for it or like a good way to display it otherwise. Because yeah, obviously like you put work into it and you, you want to show it off. Uh, with that being said, let me show you uh, the wonderful, beautiful model she did so freaking good. I'm so proud of Lemon. She's such a good girl about this stuff. Um, so Lemon's really good about wearing sweaters because we've had to make her wear them before as an alternative to a cone when she has like surgery wounds or whatever that she's not allowed to lick. Um, so she's very very good and comfortable with wearing sweaters. This is obviously just for the aesthetic purpose. I gave her lots and lots of treats and I made sure that she was wearing the sweater for like the minimum amount of time absolutely necessary. Yeah, I'm super lucky to have such a sweet girl such as her. She's... <laughs> the light of mine and Cage's life, like her and Tuna, they're just like the specialist ladies in the world. Um, yeah, it would have been great if I could get some pictures of Tuna in the sweater, but Tuna freaks out if you even try to put a collar on her, so that was just like not even gonna be a, a, a question, a debate, and anything. But yeah, I think Lemon looks so tough and so cute and so punk, uh, and pink is her color, like hot pink, that's the color that her collar usually is, like when she does wear one, even though she hasn't worn one for a couple of years now. Yeah, she's just the sweetest little lady, the absolute best. This was such just like a fun little goofy project for me. So I had a ton of fun making this. I hope you had fun watching this video. I'm sorry that it was kind of short this week, but I hope that you are having a great day or night or whatever it happens to be, wherever you are. Give yourself a big hug from me. Um, good luck if you end up making anything and bye for now. See you later.